Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Dr. Lenny Rosenblum joining us here today. Pleasure to have you here, and we are excited. Uh, the Spiritual Care, you're an owner in New York City, a chiropractor who believes in really not just the medical side of chiropractic, but the holistic side. Could you talk a little bit about that? Wow, sure. I'd love to. You know, uh, many people think of chiropractic as just for back pains, but in actuality, I was discovered on a fellow who had fallen off of a ladder was de deaf for 17 oh. years. And it took until some other doctor was feeling his spine, found something out a place in the middle of his back, pushed on it, the guy's hearing came back. And they thought, oh, we have the cure for deafness. Well, it turns out uh, after 100 years at the neuroanatomy department at the Harvard Medical, they discovered that there's nerves in that part of the spine that control <laughs> blood flow in that part of the brain that perceives the ears. So we have to look at the whole body, which is what I mean by holistic and being visited by the cat. I, I love cats. My cat just passed away last week. Cuddles, who's that? The scooter. I scooter for those of you on the podcast like what we're also live on the zoom cast not sure if you're if you're they're probably like wait what's going on but I love that scooters are around supporting you and I know it's been a hard day for you because we talked before the show somebody yeah. stole your cell phone yeah, uh, boy. are you okay oh, we're gonna get yeah. through but it's a hard thing to lose all that but do you have everything backed up are you that type of guy well, I, I, in theory, I do, but until the other phone comes in and we load it all up, it will be a nice miracle to see <laughs> if 21st century technology holds. All the clouds, exactly. So also just want to point out, it's unionsquarespinalcare.com, right? Uh, that's your website. Let's also give out your phone number for the best form of contact. Thank you. Sure. It's 212-254-4586. Forty-five eighty-six. Great and exciting to have you here. So let's talk a little bit about some of the strategies that you use, right, to help improve self-care. Um, how do we do it? Sit, stand, sleep. Now I'm feeling like you're judging my posture and I should have sat up better at the beginning of the show. But tell us a little bit about what you do. And I also want to get to know you as a person. What brought you into this field and how'd you get here? So many questions. I'll let you take the reins. <laughs> okay. Well, Talk about posture for just a moment, and I'm glad I'm having this effect on you. And it, it's uh, posture is part of how our whole body works and how we see the world and also how the world sees us. Nobody looks at somebody who's slumped over and thinks, boy, this guy is having a great day. Not only that, but mm -hmm. when you're slumped over, your body's not working as well as it should. Your yeah. heart doesn't have enough room. Your breath is not as full. The digestive tract is weighted down. So many things all depend on the simple care of just getting a person to stand up and sit up straight. Yeah. So the issues that go around to allow that to happen, though, mm -hmm. are not that simple. So we talk, in chiropractic, we talk about how the structure of vertebra are important, but also there's a relationship between the tissue that holds the entire brain and spinal cord down to the tip of your tailbone called the meninges. Oh, I was going to say fascia. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the same idea as fascia. Fascia okay. surrounds muscle. Okay. Meninges <laughs> surrounds and contains the cerebral spinal fluid so it doesn't leak out. And if you, if you take a deep breath right now, you'll feel movement down where you sit, even though your diaphragm is a foot and a half above that. So every breath that you take causes this fluid filled system to move a little bit, creating a wave. Every breath that you take creates this movement inside this meningeal tissue, which influences our postural system. Mm -hmm. So if there's a torque or an adhesion in that meningeal tissue, the signal to your postural muscles is also distorted. So it's like I use the analogy of trying to get dressed in front of a funhouse mirror. You want to pull your pants up to here because that's what you're seeing. Yeah. So the first thing that I check with patients when they come in, I take a postural photograph, I do my analysis, I do my adjustment, and I take an after picture. And yeah. if the after picture shows that that internal dialogue of the of the whole spinal system and the muscles of posture is improved, then I know I'm doing my job. If yep. it doesn't, then, oh, I got to look a little more deeper. Ah, and that's what we're doing, right? I'm feeling deep. But can I find out about you? How did you get involved? Decided to become a doctor as a chiropractor? And give me a little bit of your background. 
Okay, so I was raised in Far Rockaway Beach, Long Island. Beautiful. I'm, I'm not quite a country boy, I'm more of a beach boy. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you're out swimming today in Brighton Beach. <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse. And uh, my mother used to always listen to the radio at WOR, had this amazing Dr. Carlton Fredericks who talked about nutrition. And I became fascinated with that stuff. And of course, as most little kids, I went through my my dinosaur phase. So I started yeah. to think about, you know, how living things worked. And uh, I was pretty good. And then, uh, oh, I was high school. I was also kind of a nerd, kind of artsy and very out of shape. And I had some issues with my friends who were on the best varsity basketball team. And I realized, God, I am way out of shape. And I came up with another book on um, aerobics by Dr. Kenneth Cooper. This is back mm -hmm. in the 70s. And I started running, and after a while, I was in better shape than all the varsity players. Awesome. I showed this to one of my high school teachers, and he was like amazed and realized that this was like actual proof. And then he gave me a book by this author named Adele Davis, who was a nutritionist. And this thing really resonated because I was good in biology already. And I thought, okay, I'm going to become a nutritionist. I went to college in Brooklyn, Brooklyn College, and mm -hmm. did my BA in nutrition. As I'm getting ready to graduate, I'm getting sick. And the only person who helped me was a chiropractor who gave me a diet. Wow. Who knew that this would be better? So mm -hmm. I asked this fellow, you know, what should I do? And he suggested I go to chiropractic school. So <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> That's how I oh my and, gosh. And, and I had no plans of becoming a chiropractor. I had very limited exposure in my family to chiropractic. But when I hit school, I blossomed. I discovered that I'm really well suited to being a chiropractor. So I just embraced that. Amazing. Well, thank you. So nice to have you here. I love it. And I love having the cat in the picture too. Woohoo! Oh, good. I'm, I've had over 120 cats in my life, and they call me the crazy cat lady. Not all at once, but I used to oh, raise yeah. them, give them away, and do, like, the right thing. Yes, yeah, so I'm not that crazy. Um, all right, but I have two little boys, five and sevens. So they're dying to have another one, and yours is cute, black and white. Ours was a tabby. All right, all right, let's move on and talk more about the work that you're doing. Oh, go ahead. What did you say? No, no I'm, I'm just encouraging you. So um, other things that I might want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I still include some nutrition in my work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at somebody's fingernails, you see the white spots in the fingernail. Bed? What is that? Is that a calcium deficiency? You would think, but no, it has more to do with a zinc deficiency. See, I used to have that growing up and my mom took me to the doctor and I used to have all the white spots. Now you can't tell because I have acrylic on, but the doctor told me lack of calcium, drink more milk. Yeah. Well, we've discovered it has more to do with zinc. Okay. So in my office, I have a dilute form of zinc in okay. water, and I have people swirl around their mouth like they're out of wine tasting, and we time how long does it take for them to taste it. Oh. If it takes more than 20 seconds, they're severely deficient. Wow. And see how many things change just from that little thing of zinc added to their diet, because not wow. only does it affect skin, but your brain and spinal cord cannot have zinc cross the blood-brain barrier without zinc, from, you can't get B12 into the system without zinc. And if you have a B12 deficiency, you get numbness in your extremities, you get all kinds of mental, emotional problems. And so many of my patients have improved on so many levels just from adding a $5 bottle of zinc to their diet. Wow. So I like to look for little things that I can make an intervention before I start referring out to either a nutritionist or, you know, somebody who's more clinically inclined to medication. Mm -hmm. I always try to keep the small problems small. I like hearing that small problems small. Also, um, you mentioned the zinc, right? And I also read something before in regard to um, using B12 and something about allergy treatments. You can help people with allergies. What is so that all about? That's sort of an offshoot of the work that I studied many different modalities over the course of the years. And allergy has a lot to do with being triggered by the nervous system. So the immune system pretty much just like your muscles do what the nervous system tells them to do, the immune system is also greatly controlled by the nervous system. Mm 
-hmm. And very often stressors over the course of a lifetime can trigger an, an inappropriate reaction to different things, be it uh, you know mold or, or pollen or foods and things like this. So if somebody has allergies that they weren't born with, I can't change their DNA, but if this came on later in life, then I have very good res uh, response to the work that I do. And this is a technique called NAET, Neuroallergy Emotional Technique. And I can't exactly explain why it works, but I've had over 90% success with seasonal allergy with people. And wow. the other thing depends on you know how deep it is, but it's amazing. And wow. all I do is treat them here in the office and there's nothing that they have to take and they free. You know, and my goal in general is to free people up. You know, at a certain point in care, I like to be able to tell my patients, you're done here, please go out and do something stupid because I need the money. Yep, yep. It's true. Yes. Wow. So can I use the word cure? I'm not allowed to use the word cure, but you fix. Me, they don't Help. like to use the word I know, cure. I know, I know, but it sounds like that to me. I could say it, maybe you can't. <laughs> Thanks. But we have great improvements. Yep. Yeah. And, le and let me ask you this, um, clearly as a chiropractor, just curious, okay, we're here since COVID, there's so many people working from home, sitting at desk, sitting. Has that impacted people? Has that, have you noticed an increase with the anxiety and the stress of people's bodies since the pandemic? Anything in particular uh, that we're doing wrong? Maybe you want to give us some tips and advice? Well, to get back to that whole posture story. Yeah, 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 I know. A Sorry. Person sits in front of a computer for long periods of time with a bad chair, mm -hmm. they tend to slump forward. And over time, that starts to create all kinds of further distortions and compensations in the body. That also affects everything from metabolism to their immune system. Yeah. So we, I work on going over the details of how best to sit, stand, and sleep. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to sitting issues, we have to look at chairs. Almost all chairs in our society are built with the butt lower than the thigh. When that happens, you start to lose that inward curve of your lower back. Okay. And, yeah. you, and then your whole body is forward in, forced into that forward position, creating that slump. Mm -hmm. So we have a very simple wedge. I'm going to show it to you here, but sure. people on audio won't be able to see it. It's this angle cushion it's made of the same material that sneakers are made out of so it doesn't crush under your body weight and when you put it under the seat under you suddenly you're sitting up almost without effort and i tell my patients it's kind of like i have a five and seven it's like a car seat it's kind of like the same type of thing that right but helps most in that car seats are, are working on the lower back you sit on your butt and that's the whole thing about um how we approach our relationship to gravity, I'm gonna put it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. our, our body is made with certain bony prominences. For example, on your, on your feet, that's the heel bone and the ball of your foot. If you wear something that's too soft, those structures sink in and now your weight is borne on all the soft tissue around it. When we sit, we're supposed to sit on those two little sit bones in the bottom of our hips. If that sinks in and we have no support, then suddenly we're trying to like sit on our lower back. Well, the body wasn't designed for that. And we start to get into trouble. So I talk about how all those fancy poses of Hatha yoga, which just designed to allow a person to sit in lotus posture and not be disturbed by his spine. Yeah. We just plop ourselves in chairs and don't think about it. So I'm helping people to think about what their daily life, which adds up to our overall health is. Mm -hmm. So I go over like how high your head should be on a pillow when you sleep at night. Or when you stand, are your shoes really supporting you? And are you even putting the weight on your foot properly? You know, uh, so many different ways of approaching this. And I try to find a way that people can relate to and retain. So they're taking better care of themselves. Thank you. Wow. All oh, these are good types, good advice, because you got me thinking about how I'm sitting and how I'm feeling and now how, yeah. Well, I'd be losing that arch. I've been doing a lot of sitting. <laughs> I'll take one of these cushions. Yeah. Where can we get them from? 
Well, from the office, what can I say? Yes, tell us. You remind us of your best forms of contact. Normally, we take a commercial break here. We're not. But remind us of your phone number, uh, where we can reach you, and then we'll continue the conversation because people tuning in at different times, always good to keep promoting. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. You Tell me when to start. Go for it. We're listening. (laughs) So, uh, my office is Lake. Yeah. My office is located on the corner of 18th Street and Broadway, 873 mm-hmm. Broadway. And my phone number is 212-254-4586. Again, 212-245-4586. And the website is unionsquarespinalcare.com, all one word. And uh, there's a link on the top of that page. You can actually make an appointment. Yeah. And it has a little bit of information about the practice. And if you want to know more, you're going to have to call. I, I don't put too much there. Good. And, uh, yeah, those are the main things that people look for. I mean, I'm sort of on Facebook. I'm sort of on Instagram, but I don't really focus on that too much. And maybe because I'm a, maybe because I'm a baby boomer, you know? Yeah. You can tell I'm a baby boomer because I actually walk out of the house without my phone. Mm-hmm. It's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what's next? Well, there's a lot to your notes. There's a lot to you and all that you do. Um, and also, um, you you mentioned uh, the posture has a really great influence on long-term you know, health in a sense, right? But you mm-hmm. also talk about all the systems in our body are indirectly affecting our nervous system and control it, right? So the spine is the main connection. For someone like any normal person, should we be receiving chiropractic care all the time? Why not? There's some great benefits to it, right? Not just adjustments, but there's more than what you do. If you can explain that to people, because some people also say, I'm scared to go to the chiropractor. It hurts. I'm going to break my back. You're not breaking their back. You know, no. some pe- can no. you explain the process of continued chiropractic care and how that could be a benefit to people? Thank you. That's a great question. So the little things that trickle into our spines over time, like I said, you know, we do something stupid, like pick up something too heavy or we yeah. spill or stuff like that. And we get up and we think we're fine, but we have little aches and pains that we've sort of gotten used to. We shouldn't. So just like you see a dentist once or twice a year, you get cleaned out, you get checked. The same thing with chiropractic. You should definitely see a chiropractor at least a couple of times a year just to make sure everything's okay. And depending on what I'm finding with people, I might recommend they come in three times a week for a few months. Some t- some people come in once a week. Some people show up when they feel they need it. Yeah. I try to give people tools to recognize when they're really due. Okay. Yeah. Um, the car, you know, the nervous system has so many effects. I mean, everything from heart rate to hormonal systems, women's cycles. Uh, allergies, so many things all tie into that central nervous system that if we ignore it, we're going to get into trouble. And like I said, we want to keep small problems small. So a little bit of work done in the beginning is a lot better than waiting till someone's in crisis. Yeah. You know, and I always tell people, you don't call the electrician or the house painter to fix your house when the fire department is parked in front. True, true. <laughs> So if you're waiting until you have numbness down your leg or, or you know, you can't do anything, then it, you know, it's going to be a lot longer to fix. And sometimes I can't even fix certain things. Mm-hmm. When, when I intervene earlier, hey, your life is smooth and easy, which is what I like to see. Yep. And that you have such an amazing also uh, way about you. Let me ask you the, the, the power of a positive mindset. You seem happy. Uh, and Mindset is also a big thing. And in your field as a doctor, do you also recommend anything like um, to help us stay focused and stay happy and the benefits of that? Because if you're believing in holistic, right, they tell you those are the better mindset and positivity have a higher higher vibration and it's just better Mm -hmm. for us. Just curious. Well, I kind of stick with the foundation of how the body is Mm -hmm. and is the breath moving through the spine? Is the whole body staying upright? You know, when a person is hurting, they don't feel like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. Not only that, they're, how they express life is completely different. So simply by creating more ease and a sense of confidence is, yeah. in their own bodies makes yeah. a huge difference in how you show up in the world. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I pr- have my own personal spiritual practice, but I don't bring that to other people. It's kind of creepy having somebody, you know, preach their religion to you when mm-hmm. you're in their office for health care. But uh, I have my own practice at, that I do daily, and that's how I check in with myself and bring myself, you know, my best self out to the world by doing my own internal work. Yeah. And let me ask you also as a chiropractor, right? Do you work with those that are, that are, have sports injuries or, you know, in your practice, do you focus oh, on, is I'm that a lot athlete. of it? Yeah, I get a lot of athletes. It's about uh-huh. a, um, the, the official league chiropractor for the Gotham girls roller derby. League. Oh, oh my gosh. A years yeah. ago, I did a, a piece with them and I worked at Fox. Well, yes. Okay. Well, you want Those to come girls to my are desk? Tough. I can bring you to the game this coming Sunday. They are rough and tough, and I can't believe it because, like, I haven't been roller skating in years. Probably since then, since I roller skated with them years ago for a segment, uh, I would kill myself. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I could imagine they're bumping and pushing and fall. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. These that is so great. cool that you are on board with them. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah, it's a great way to volunteer and give back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, athletes, I have uh, some semi-pro basketball players and, and, and all that coming in here. And, uh, yeah, all walks of life show up in here. I don't really say I'm a sports chiropractor. I just fix bodies. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, though. But you do a lot. And in particular, as a chiropractor, of course, you're based out of New York City. Um, That's an accomplishment in itself. (laughs) Could I just ask you about your background? Where did you go to school? So I, I started school on Long Island in New York chiropractic and was not very happy with the administration. Actually, my class went out on strike after I had left to just go to the school in Atlanta, Georgia. So the school called Life Chiropractic College then, what became the largest single chiropractic college in the world. And it was a great place to live and learn because unlike the North Shore of Long Island, rents were a hell of a lot cheaper for a student in Atlanta, Georgia. I have mm-hmm. to say. <laughs> but uh, after... 10 years almost landlocked in Atlanta. I had to have 300 beach days a year. And then I moved down to Boca Raton, Florida, where I worked for a a chiropractor who was a specialist in the technique that I had been involved in when I was in school. And I studied under him for about two and a half years. And I really learned so much about how to be with people, clinical skills, judgment, and all these things. I, I really recommend, you know, studying with the practitioner before you go out in the world got it and you know i brought and he's the one who brought me to study more about nutrition he used to do a weekly radio show because this is before podcasts back in the 80s and 90s and i i you know started to learn from some of the most top researchers in the field of nutrition and health from him so i brought all these things with me when i moved to new york and it's part of the package of what I am. Oh, wonderful. And by the way, what, what was with your mom and WOR radio? I read that, that oh, she caused, uh, inspired she you. You still listen to a doctor? WOR to uh, Carlton Fredericks, Dr. Carlton Fredericks. Okay. Yeah. And he was, uh, he had this r- radio show. We talked about nutrition, all those great things. And, you know, I was fascinated. So it piqued my interest. And I discovered that I'm just naturally interested in health and biology in general. Yeah. Don't ask me to memorize a Krebs cycle again. Oh, I can hear you. Awesome. Awesome. W-O-R. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. And we are almost out of time. Um, so in closing today, we got to wrap this up. My goodness. There's a lot to you. A lot more we got to talk about. And, you know, what would you say makes you unique as a chiropractor? Why should people reach out to you? And by the way, not just from New York, people can come to you from out of state. I'm sure you have clients from Connecticut, New Jersey. Uh, do you do any telehealth at all as well? I mean, I know it's not hands-on, no, but I didn't know if there's any. hands-on thing, which is mm-hmm. you know, why during the pandemic, I was only open like, you know, limited times for essential care workers and all that. But uh, no, um, I, you know, where I am in Union Square is a central hub for at least the subway system. So, you know, I get a lot of people that 
work in Manhattan or at least can come in that way. I have a few people that come in from upstate in Connecticut and, uh, but you know, there, there's other, there are other people who do similar techniques close to where they are. So I'm always, I'm always mindful of, is it more stressful for somebody to come see me or is it better for them to find somebody local? Yeah. But yeah, I do have quite a number of people that come in from miles and miles away and I try to do the best that I can to make it worth their while. Oh, wonderful. And if we want to reach out to you, would you mind sharing again? Of course. So you look for unionsquarespinalcare.com online. And um, my phone number is, of course, 212-254-4586. Remember, if you ignore your health, it will go away. Perfect. Uh, yeah, true. Good point. We'll remember that. Thank you so much. You have a great Thank day. You. Pleasure getting right. to know you. And I'm wishing you the best of luck on getting that new cell phone. I pray the cloud works and everything's backed up. But I love how cool, calm and collective you are because I I've been without a cell phone for four weeks. Mine broke. I've been using an old one with a SIM card in my mom's and it's a disaster. And I'm like panicking because I lost a lot of stuff. I didn't upload. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. You have Thanks. a great day and we'll talk soon, Doc. Bye bye. bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.